one more example of uh, simple harmonic motion. We'll look at vertical oscillations of a liquid column in a U-tube. So you have, uh, let's say we have a U-tube and uh, let's say it has some liquid in it and the level of the liquid is, both the arms is, say, equal. So let's say this is the level of the liquid in both the arms. And you have this liquid over here. Uh, what we observe is, let's say by some means we are able to push this liquid down in this column. So what will happen in that case is this level will rise, this liquid level will go up over here probably. And when you release the pressure or when you release the force, this liquid column will start oscillating right, in this way, in this YouTube. And uh, the objective of this video is to investigate these oscillations and see whether they are simple harmonic in nature or not. So let us say we have this liquid column and let us say the mass per unit length is equal to m. So the mass of the liquid is, we are not talking of density over, we are just simply saying that let us say the mass of per unit length is m. Now, let us say this particular level of the liquid over here is say h. Therefore, total mass of the liquid will be equal to mass per unit length is m and the total length of the liquid will be h and h over here so it will become m into h 2h so this will be the total mass of the liquid now let us come to the situation let us say we apply force and the liquid level rises over here and let us say the liquid level is something like this now let us say the liquid goes down over here by say this goes up to over here so this is let us say y and therefore there will be increase in level and this will also be equal to so the new levels are this and this, I am just making it a little more thicker to distinguish. So the liquid level is now this and we have this particular situation. And let us say we, at, uh, we are studying this, the, the system at this particular instant when the liquid is over here and the liquid is over here. Of course, if, when we release the force, it will start performing oscillations. So when it is in this particular situation, the liquid over here has a tendency to go back. And that is because of a restoring force that comes into play when we apply this force and release it. So there's a restoring force acting on this liquid over here, which is trying to take it back into this, uh, in this direction. So what is the magnitude of the restoring force? So if I want to find out the restoring force, the, resting, the restoring force will be equal to the weight of this particular liquid column, this much. The weight of this, because this weight will act in downward direction and try to take this liquid in this direction. So if I know the weight of this liquid column, this much part, then I know the restoring force. And it is in the negative direction, so I'll use the minus sign. So restoring force, it will, it will be equal to minus, mass per unit length is m. And this particular liquid column okay, is causing the pressure. Now, if you look at it more closely, the liquid column which is pushing it down is not only this, but... This is the liquid column which is trying to push it down because the extra weight which is acting is this much because the level over here is over here and this is the extra weight over here. So this much liquid column, this. And the weight of this liquid column would be equal to restoring force will be equal to minus m into, this is also y as you can see over here, this is y, so this is also equal to y. So minus m into 2y. This is y, this is y, so m minus m into 2y into g would be the restoring force acting on the downward, in the downward direction. So if this is the restoring force acting in the downward direction, what is the acceleration of this liquid column? Now acceleration is equal to force upon mass. And the restoring force is minus m 2y into g. And this force is acting on this entire liquid column, the total mass of the liquid. And total mass of the liquid is m into 2h. So this will give me m getting cancelled, 2 getting cancelled. So the liquid, uh, the, the value that I'll get is minus g by h into y. Therefore, I can rewrite over here the acceleration alpha is equal to minus g by h into y. Now, if g and h are constant for this liquid column. G is the acceleration due to gravity. H was the initial height of the liquid column. That is not going to change. The what changes is y. Y is the displacement of the liquid column. And therefore, we can very clearly see over here, alpha is proportional 
to minus y. So acceleration is proportional to displacement in the direction are opposite. And therefore, these oscillations are simple harmonic motion or these oscillations are simple harmonic in nature. So this is how we prove that these oscillations are simple harmonic in nature. As always, we will look at on the time period. Now, if I rewrite this particular equation, I can get y upon alpha will be equal to h upon g minus i. And we know that time period t is equal to 2 pi displacement by acceleration. So this will be equal to 2 pi into displacement is y, displacement upon acceleration is y upon alpha that is equal to h upon g. So I can write down h upon g. Of course, now you know why we have ignored the my negative sign because t is a scalar quantity. So thus, we get the time period of this um, oscillations. And that what, what, what that means is that if you have a liquid column and if you know the a height h and the acceleration of uh, acceleration due to gravity, you can get a good idea about the time period of the oscillations. So if you apply a force, what time period, uh, what is the time for one oscillation, that you can get with this particular equation. So in this video, we have proved that uh, Vertical oscillations of a liquid column in YouTube uh, in a YouTube are uh, simple harmonic in nature, and the the time period of that depends upon the height of the liquid column. Thank you.